So today we're going to take a look at auto layout and in particular we're going to look at how to create fluid layouts uh, using auto layout uh, and size classes and priority constraints. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a fluid, fluid layout which uh, when we're using Xcode 6 in the uh, compact any size class down here which shows for all compact width layouts such as the 3.5 inch iPhone all the way up to the 4.7 inch uh, iPhone 6 uh, we'll sh I'll show you how to create a fluid layout for this size class so that, for example, when we're on the iPhone uh, 3.5 inch, uh, it's kind of a compact form, but then when it we go up to the 4.7 inch uh, iPhone 6, this form will expand and fill this entire screen because right now it's not actually doing that without a layout. Uh, and to make this look a little better, I will show you how we can use something like spacer views to kind of make this uh, form expand out to fill this entire screen. So I'll show you how we can do that. So first thing we're going to do um, is take a look first at what we have in this form. So you can see we have some labels and then some text fields and then we have an encompassing view surrounding each of those. So each of these uh, fields and labels has an encompassing view which then has some constraints on it uh, to their neighboring sibling uh, views and labels. So just to let you know that. The first thing we're going to do is remove the constraints in between all of these so I'm just going to go ahead and remove these. These were set up initially just to kind of show this initial layout but we aren't going to use these in our new layout, so I'm going to remove these. Try to remove that one. There we go. And there's one more down here. I will remove that one as well. Okay, great. So we'll slide this all down. We'll select these and slide them down. And then we're going to go over to the object collection over here and we're going to search for a view. And then we'll scroll all the way down to the view object here. And then we're just going to drag that onto the layout and drop that onto the storyboard. And then we're going to resize this. We're going to keep it 200 points wide. And we can go up here to the size inspector and we'll keep it a width of 200. But we're going to change the height to just 10. We're going to make it skinny. So remove that one. I'm not sure how that one got there. But uh, we have this view right here. So this is going to be our spacer view and so we'll now move that into place just below this label and we'll drop it in right there. And Then we're going to set up our constraints. The first one we're going to set up is a vertical constraint to this label here. So we'll set up a vertical constraint. Then we're going to set up a center horizontally and container constraint. So this is going to make it uh, center horizontally with the rest of these uh, labels and fields. Then we're going to create another vertical constraint, vertical spacing constraint, with the next encompassing view here. So uh, this view that encompasses the first label and text field. So we'll do a vertical spacing. And then we're going to create some constraints for the width and then the height. So we'll try and drag this up. Yep, and then set one for the height. So now we have all the constraints for this spacer view. But we're going to go over to the size inspector and change a few of these values. The first we're going to change is this vertical space here. We're going to change that to zero. So we'll set that equal to zero. Then change the top space constraint to zero as well. And you can see now that all the space that exists now in between this label and this encompassing view is the height of our spacer view here. So that's what we want. We want the space, the vertical spacing constraints to be zero. And then the last thing we're going to do is set the priority of this height constraint. Instead of it being a thousand, like it's set here, we're going to set that equal to 750. So slightly less priority than all the other constraints. And that's it. That's all we need to do for this first spacer view. So we're going to go ahead and copy this spacer view by holding down the option key and then dragging it down. So now we have a copy of it. And then we're going to do the same thing with this spacer view. So we're going to set a vertical constraint 
to this encompassing view here, and then a vertical spacing constraint to the next encompassing view. We're going to make sure it's centered horizontally, and it's all set. It already copied over the width and height constraints as well. And then we'll go over here and change these constants again to zero. Change this to zero as well. But this time we're going to do something a little bit different. This height constraint we're actually going to remove. We're going to get rid of that. And the way we'll do that is we'll go down here to show the, the object graph. We'll go back over to our height constraint and select it. And that will show it here in our uh, kind of object graph. So we'll select it and just hit delete. And we'll remove that. So now that constraint is gone. So we'll select our spacer view again, our second one. But this time we're going to create a constraint. We're going to drag and select the first spacer view and say that we want equal heights. So now the idea here is that we'll create these spacer views that will then expand equally out as the screen gets larger. So we don't want them to be different heights or or expand at different sizes. Uh, we want them all to be equal size, so we're going to set them as equal widths. So that's it. So that's all we need for this second spacer view. So I'm just going to then copy this and drag it down below. So now we have a third spacer view. Because the rest of the spacer views are pretty much the same as the first and the second ones, I'm just going to go ahead and cut to uh, the end of this so that uh, all the spacer views will be set up. And then I'll show you the last step that we need to do in order to uh, create our fluid layout. Okay, so I've created the rest of the spacer views here for the rest of the form. And you can see those in our previews as well. So the last step we need to do is we're going to go down and select the sign up button here at the bottom and create one more constraint. We're going to control drag and create one more constraint by selecting the encompassing view and say and select bottom space to bottom layout guide. So now we've created that constraint for this button. And you can see the previews update as well. But what we want to do is we want to have this sign up button uh, constrained so that it's a little bit closer to the bottom of the screen. And the way we can do that is by selecting this constraint and updating this constant to be a smaller number than the 209 that it's automatically set to right now. Let's set it to something like 50. And when we do that, you can see the form now expands. And you can see that it's expanding because the height of the spacer views is expanding as well. And they're expanding equally. And that's because of the priority constraint that we set up earlier for the height of the spacer view. Because that constraint has a lower priority than the rest of the constraints that were set up, it's breaking uh, when it uh, expands and contracts for the different sizes of the screens. And we can go ahead and remove the color from these spacer views so that you can see it, what it looks like without that. Now you can see how the form expands and contracts and the different fields have equal spacing in between them, and it expands and contracts to fill out up the different screens. So that's it. That's how we can create a fluid layout using spacer views and priority constraints in Xcode 6 with size classes. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them. Uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later.